everybody. <laughs> You should see the befores. Giggles, chair switches. How do we move the camera? My Why head is the camera cut off? It head still cut off. He thinks uh so actually his head shouldn't be cut off if if it does what it normally does. Um, which I'm gonna show him right now. Usually the lens gives you a little bit more space than it's yeah. showing us. So okay, that's go. better. <laughs> now I see two of us. Oh, I'm so thrilled, just like every day, um, for today's guest speaker on our day six of our seven day transformation challenge. Daniel is very near and dear to my heart. We have been basically best friends for almost 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> almost eight Hi. years. Hi. Hi mom. Almost eight years we've, we met in LA uh -huh. and it's just been cosmic alignment of projects and world changing things since we lived together from that point. Thank you, Nate, for that. That yeah. connection. Um, one thing that's brought Daniel and I together for many years is our love for the environment and service and really trying to better the planet. And we have done all sorts of things like feed the homeless to work on um, our NPO together, trying to raise awareness. <laughs> we even did um, an event in New York City not that long ago for coral reef restoration, um, which was really cool. We got to go to One Planet, One Future, if you guys don't know who that is. Do the down the, the search, thing. yeah, and um, really cool project that's going on. So today is going to be about how you can become an Earth Guardian with us, and how you can also save some money in the process, um, or plant some trees, but really feel empowered to be a part of the greener uh, Earth we really want to see in our future. So Daniel. Uh, can you please tell us uh, why this is important to you or what really got you into um, caring about the planet? Well, um, I think as Sarah wrote in the description, uh, growing up in Hawaii, a really beautiful place that is uh, very sacred and um, the people, uh, the community is very connected to the to the land and to the ocean and to the elements and so I feel that um, just growing up uh, being born and raised there um, has a lot to do with the way I feel about the earth as a whole uh, but more specifically um, being able to go snorkeling and scuba diving with my dad as a young kid um, was one of the most magical treasured memories I still hold with me today and uh, at the start of last year, 2019, um, I had created a tiny little enamel pin that was of a coral skull with an eel weaving in and out of it. And I didn't know it at the time that my sister and I were actually creating it, but it served as a metaphor for the death of coral reefs. And it was then in there that I typed in, you know, how can I give this pin back to um, the world in some way? And, I found a nonprofit uh, called Coral um, that actually was receiving money to help replant corals and educate coastal communities and um, try to save the coral reefs. And I didn't realize then that uh, the coral reefs were dying at a rapid rate mm. as a result of uh, climate change mm. and carbon emissions. And so that led me down the rabbit hole which led us to what Sarah just said, um, to New York to try to hold a fundraising dinner to raise money and awareness about uh, the death of coral reefs and mm -hmm. solutions that people could practice to help save them. And we would sell the pins and our really good friend Abe got us sponsors for the event and we were allowing to, you know, make it a really fun event for people to become aware and also make a difference in the process. Mm -hmm. We had big sponsors for that one, thanks to Abe. We got Giwaki, Giwaki, Guayaki. Yeah, he says it. Guayaki. <laughs> Some people say it. And yeah. Goddess Garden. And Goddess Garden, which is one of the first to start a um, sunblock to help prevent the death of coral reefs. If you guys don't know, if you haven't seen our lives from New York City where we were there, the ocean gives us what percentage of air? A lot. 50% of our air, 50% of our air. And we've actually lost, they estimate, 50% of our coral reefs. Um, this is just a staggering, scary number when you put this on your head. Do you guys like to breathe? <clears throat> yeah. I do. 
Um, and not only does coral reefs in the ocean give us air, but they also help protect the shoreland. Um, so anybody's living coastal, it would cost an estimated amount of how much? <laughs> This is what Lindsay must feel like. Yeah. Uh, the number, let's just say, is billions. There's going to be a yeah. lot of billions and yeah. trillions in this conversation yeah. because that's how much of an impact yeah. that we have um, around the globe. Yes. For just to replace and repair um, what the coral reefs save us in the environment um, to have. Um, so there are things that you can do, and it's just one degree difference where the coral reefs will die. Mm -hmm. So if we get one degree warmer, it can wipe them out. It, it does what's called what? Can you explain a little bit about what bleaching and why I unplug this? I feel, I feel lost when Sarah's not here. <laughs> I have lost track of thought. We don't have Lindsay well, today. Have you guys noticed this? I see Lindsay's watching. Yeah. Lindsay, we need you. What Look was what the happens question? when you're not here, Lindsay. It's, it's I feel unstable, Lindsay. <laughs> what was the question? Um, uh, it's called bleaching, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah who's the expert here? <laughs> this girl. <laughs> when, the, when the ocean rises just one degree, the, what is it called? It lives inside of a uh, coral. Uh, I think it's <laughs> Zoxanthellia. Yes, I, thank you. Don't quote me on yeah. that pronunciation, <laughs> but that's the algae mm. that lives inside of mm. the coral, which the coral is like a skeleton and it's mm. a symbiotic relationship. And when the water is warm, the ocean acidifies, then that zoxanthellia is like, it's way too hot in here. It feels like a fever and it'll just kind of leap out of the coral and that's what causes the coral to bleach. And that's why when you see photos of coral bleaching, it looks white. And if it's left at that point in time, then the coral just dies. Mm. And, and that's, that's why what you we see, want to avoid. Like the Great Barrier Reef, that's yeah. what we have. And it gives you air. So remember people like not living on the ocean might think, well, how does this affect me? It's called air. <laughs> Um, and it, it's imperative. And they actually just recently put out um, a study where um, trees give one ton um, a year in fighting against carbon dioxide, right? Or wait, how do I? Carbon emissions. They help clean the planet one ton a year. Just think of it that way, like a filter. But whales, it's somewhere estimated around 40 tons a year per whale is filtering this out and giving out clean air. Mm -hmm. Um, so taking care of our ocean is really important and that's his personal, um, passion is the ocean. So today we're going to give you... And thinking about it, um, as like coral is the foundation of life in mm -hmm. the ocean. Mm -hmm. The coral feeds the tiniest little shrimps, they feed the tiny fish, the fish feed the sharks, and then it's like the, the whole pyramid in the ocean leads up to what she's talking about, the whales, which are sequestering carbon that's the word mm -hmm. i think sarah wanted to use was mm -hmm. trees sequester carbon mm -hmm. bamboo whales mm -hmm. even us plants mm -hmm. everything on earth mm -hmm. and it's like the the coral is kind of like the forest of the ocean and Correct. it's what feeds everything so if you mm -hmm. if you not only do you lose what they're filtering out for us but then you lose what they're feeding and giving to the rest of the ocean and if that goes out of balance uh, we go out of balance and you're seeing it. So I know personally a lot of individuals who don't believe in climate change. And so I want you guys for the benefit of this video, just to forget about climate change for a minute and focus on a greener environment. So eat, whether you have personal feelings about um, climate change, please for the sake of our future, let's just come together as a collective and think just about a greener planet. Daniel and I are really blessed to live minutes away from a phenomenal hike on the water. We do it almost every single day and it's just full of garbage. Mm -hmm. It's this beautiful area and this garbage just keeps coming up in the water systems. Um, and this is here in the States. A fun, not so fun fact about the United States is 50% of our lakes and rivers are too polluted to swim in let alone drink, let's just think about that. And that's what the government standard says, and we all know that's probably pretty low on what we should actually, it's probably much higher in what, what is good for us to, mm -hmm. to be in. So this is stateside, it is not just third world country, it's right here, right now, in some of the greenest cities in the United States, they have issues on fog day um, where the air isn't moving and how much pollution there is where people can't breathe. Um, this is happening right now, our water systems are really contaminated. Uh, there's tons of pollutants in them and it is affecting our children. It's mm -hmm. affecting our health, headaches, um, body issues, cancer. 
So even if you don't personally have an investment into the environment, it is affecting you on a personal level and your family and your loved ones. Mm -hmm. If this hasn't convinced you, we're going to give you some staggering tips. Um, and, and Daniel will be at with us in Maui in April um, at Odyssey. If you guys have listened to the other videos, you've heard about Odyssey happening. It's a five-day training on how to transform your life, live your best life, become an earth guardian, become an entrepreneur that's successful, or just really hone in on your highest self. And he will be there um, with some other experts and, and part of the journey to help us all live a, a better, greener life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what are some staggering statistics that can help wake the individual up that's watching right now and spread the word on what's going on? Yeah, I'd first like to say I definitely wouldn't consider myself an expert amongst mm -hmm. um, some pretty amazing uh, researchers and scientists and authors and mm -hmm. engineers. Let's plug that in. Like this book by Paul Hawken mm -hmm. and the team of researchers and scientists mm -hmm. that have found uh, the top 100 solutions to reversing climate change and, mm -hmm. and carbon emissions. Mm -hmm. And it's staggering. Um, a lot of it um, is things that you and I can't necessarily do, so we won't focus too much on that, but we, we will be able to touch on some of the smaller solutions that as a collective whole around the globe can um, create some pretty significant change and reduce gigatons, which is mm. billions of tons of carbon emissions mm -hmm. in the atmosphere by the year 2050. Mm -hmm. And this um, is Project Drawdown by Paul yeah. Hawken. Um, that Daniel... It's an amazing nonprofit as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. But some of the staggering tips, like while reading that book, trying to scurry to find uh, the answer to Sarah's question just now, <laughs> uh, one that brought tears to my eyes was, um, I think there's only about three trillion trees left, which is a high estimate than what was expected. But the thing that made me tear up was 15 billion trees get cut down a year. Mm. No, don't make Sarah cry on camera. 15 oh. billion trees get cut down a year. Um, and a lot of, uh, I think, the shock factor, um, which is, you know, what climate change ca causes alarm in the news, um, because it attracts a lot of attention. Again, what Sarah said isn't necessarily what we should focus on, but um, it is a dire truth. And I think us being able to focus on the solutions, and mm -hmm. like Sarah said, the amount of money that it saves mm -hmm. is also a pretty cool shock factor. Like um, the smallest thing might be switching to LED light mm -hmm. bulbs. Um, although it's twice as much for an LED as opposed to like an incandescent bulb, you get a 10 to 30% return on your investment. And anybody that's <clears throat> into investing, 10% is pretty good. Mm -hmm. But when you say 10 to 30% return on your investment, it's pretty amazing. And light bulb, an LED light bulb will last you 27 years mm -hmm. if you leave it on for five hours a day. Mm -hmm. um, other simple solutions like uh, a lot of people think about having to sacrifice uh, their convenience for helping to uh, make the world, you know, a greener planet, but that's definitely not true because you're ultimately saving money. Mm -hmm. um, also doing things like switching to a more plant rich diet, mm -hmm. you're reducing <clears throat> so many carbon emissions by eating just a little bit less mm -hmm. meat or beef. Mm -hmm. They say that all, if you took all the livestock around the globe, mm -hmm. they would be the third largest emitter of greenhouse gases. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, it's Anything shocking. Anything greener is better for you. And it's you. way healthier for you. Yeah. Um, tips that you can do would be, you know, it comes down to when you're in... So we have five tips? Sure. For this. Okay. Or five tips on that subject? Or five tips coming? Well, let's keep, help me. Somebody help me keep track. Because okay. they're just going to spew out of me. Okay. Should we save them for so we the have, end? We have staggering statistics. Okay. And those are those are some big things. Yeah. I think there's more though. Can, can, before you go into tips. Okay. 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 <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot. We just want to blurb it out to you, yeah. and we know it's a lot to take. So, uh, staggering statistics. Like, what about educating a woman? Mm -hmm. What like one of the top parts of um, educating women or mm -hmm. educating girls, not women, yeah. educating girls and women, and family planning. Those two solutions combined. Mm -hmm create 
the number one solution to uh, drawing down emissions. Wow. Think about yeah. that, people out there, baby making breeders. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> we, that's, that's what this is. It's, and especially in third world countries where they don't have access to birth control or education. It is um, a big reason as we grow and grow and grow and grow and grow that we're having more pollution. Yeah. So giving a woman a chance for education. Yeah, and if you wanted to tie a statistic to it, it would look something like if 100% of girls just had a primary and secondary education, that would uh, decrease about close to a billion people in the world and per year uh, by 2050 wow and then if uh a girl made it through 12 years of school then i believe uh that's about four to five less kids per wow. girl wow and this is mostly in areas where it's obviously really hard mm -hmm. for for girls to get education because mm -hmm. uh, they don't have access to it uh the schools aren't built it takes a long time for them to get to school mm -hmm. um so mm -hmm. there's a lot of help there what about planes if you fly in a plane so travel is one of the other largest emitters planes, yeah. of toxins um pollutions for the environment CO2. that's really hard co2 yeah. so what are what is the number with planes like how does that work when you travel on a plane i think to try to make it comp like for people to understand a, a plane ride from say like new york to san francisco is about a ton of co2 emitted from that single plane ride and the average american is emitting about 18 tons a year of co2 mm. and that's quite a substantial amount for just one plane ride and that's just one way a round mm. trip is going to double that amount mm. and so what we can do is two things this would be considered a tip mm. should we save it to the end all right we're going from statistics we're going to give you a little bit of tips on that one okay so if you want to take a plane, there's a really cool website called Alternative Airlines. Mm -hmm. And there's, I'm sure, a few others, but you can type in, you can just use that as your platform and you can type in where you decide to go and then that website will offer you some really great airlines, some of which you know, like Alaska mm -hmm. Airlines and Delta, that are using biofuels, mm -hmm. which cut down CO2 emissions substantially. And biofuels are just using biomass like Super sugar cool. cane and, and corn. What are the and other waste. ones? Do you know a few a few airlines that operate? Uh, that... Alternative Airlines is going to source through every Which single one. Which one is doing it? Right. Yeah. And how many trees does it take, though? I want to know that. How many? You can actually plant trees. Tony Robbins does this. We did it on our mm -hmm. last trip to New York. We planted trees to offset our Elsa's trip, yeah. our nonprofit. To New so York that's City. the second tip: is carbon offsetting. You can uh, go to um, what was the name of the website? I think it's I A. CO, I'll, well, I'll have to type it into the comment section below, but it's actually uh, a website uh, run by the government where you can type in um, where you're going on a plane ride and it'll tell you how much carbon in tons or metric tons that you're actually emitting. Mm -hmm. And then you can go to a website like uh, Cool, mm -hmm. C O O L. The cool effect, I think, is what it's called, and you can uh, type in the amount of hours that that plane ride took, and it will give you a, a specific estimate of how much money you can donate to help offset that plane ride. Super cool, yeah. and we have a great nonprofit that does it. Tyler Gage started one called Runa, which is now called Aliados. Mm -hmm. And if you guys don't know of our company that we all run called Nature of No More, um, we do organic. Um, <clears throat> body care that specializes with tree barks. We actually plant a tree for every bottle sold with Alidose, and that is another place that you can mm -hmm. plant trees. For every dollar, basically, it translates into planting a tree all throughout South America. Mm -hmm. So, And I think there's a few other places that they do it, which is really cool. Mm -hmm. There's other nonprofits called Plant a Tree. That's one you do mm -hmm. for my birthday, mm -hmm. Plant a Tree. Mm -hmm. And it's basically a dollar per tree. So really cool way to offset when you're flying or traveling or anything you might do, you mm -hmm. can just go, you know, if you can't stop what you're doing, um, you can offset it. Mm -hmm. Next tip. Um, plant bamboo. Oh, really? Yeah, bamboo is oh. the number one sequester of carbon. Wow. And it's the fastest growing. I mean, if you sat next to a piece of bamboo that's growing, it would grow at about an inch an hour. Um, it can complete its wow. entire growth in a, in a growth cycle. 
um, when you cut it, it still is going to continue to grow. It's basically a grass. Wow. And yeah. It, it can also be a beast if you don't want it. <laughs> yeah, it is little. highly invasive. Yeah. But it, um, I think there's an estimated 77 million uh, acres of wow. bamboo planted now. And wow, it's supposed awesome. to go up another 34 in the oh, next cool. 30 years. And you can get bamboo that if you're trying to eat, there's different types of bamboo. So some bamboo just goes all over the place and you can't really control it without metal slabs, which I've experienced in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. um, and there's there's other kinds of bamboo that is not known for that. So do your research if you're going to start planting some bamboo um, mm -hmm. or even purchasing bamboo items. Would that be uh, more of an eco-friendly? That's a good question. Um, I'm sure in some way you're adding to uh, the demand for the growth of bamboo in that way. I haven't researched it but I think of it more as something where if you're you decide to put some beautiful bamboo in your backyard um, it, it's another thing to serve as a reminder uh, mm -hmm. because I think we always constantly need it um, that reminder that I stand for making the planet a greener place mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. the small things that I do um, affect the larger whole mm -hmm. and that's really what the earth is, is mm -hmm a great hole <laughs> i think if you go back to his statement where he was saying yeah <laughs> um he said it's each person admits 18 tons a year yeah uh, so that's for america the, uh, average isn't american it's not a lot yeah. so if you think you're not making an impact you're making an impact and some of these things you can do will make a large drawdown to making a positive effect rather than a negative effect. So what yeah. are some other things that people can do that are listening right now to well, make a difference? Well, I mean, thinking about that number of 18 tons of CO2 emitted a year, uh, a conservative estimate is that we should cut that number in half. Mm. Uh, one thing that Paul Hawken, that I just watched in one of his videos says is we should try to think of 50%. So what is, how can we reduce, reuse, recycle by 50%? Um, can we buy 50% more food? Because oh, yeah. the third best solution in Drawdown is food waste management. And um, again, how can we think of ourselves, how much food do we overestimate when we're, when we're buying something at the grocery store or at a restaurant and how much of that food just kind of goes to waste in our mm -hmm. own refrigerators? We're doing this, you know, three to five to six times a day. The mm -hmm. food's right in front of our plates. Mm -hmm. And, um, a lot of it, I think, is just being tossed to the side and, and it's going to waste. They say that when, a, when all the crops in the world, when food is planted, a third of that is just gone. Mm. It's just gone. Mm. And that's so this is why this is a, one of the bigger ones that causes it's huge It's just it's huge. food waste. So understanding that food waste is huge against our environment and you not wasting food is going to save you money. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. It, it comes down to a consumer level as much as a large corporate level. Um, I mean, billions and billions and billions of tons of CO2 emitted uh, for nothing if that food is getting wasted. Mm -hmm. And especially when that food that's getting wasted could go to help feed almost a billion people around the world. Mm -hmm. uh, but with all that aside, um, save money. Don't yeah. buy as much food that's just going to mm -hmm. go to waste. And you can use companies or support companies like Imperfect Produce. If exactly. Imperfect Produce is in your area, they are um, a company that started actually a block for me in San Francisco who focus on getting the food that a normal producer or farmer would throw out because it looks imperfect. Right. And so... Which is how it's supposed to look. Yeah. Yeah, right. That's organic. That's like from the garden. So it, having weird looking things on it is actually a good thing. Mm -hmm. They're a great company um, that you can start if it's in your area. What are some other things? Go to farmer's markets. Farmer's because markets. when you think about it, um, Sarah and Lindsay and Christina were just holding a workshop. And in that workshop, they held an almond mm. Uh no, uh, they held a blueberry disguised mm. as an, it was no, an, an almond. almond disguised it as a blueberry. It was an almond. It's a secret. And they were holding it was an almond. the blue almond. <laughs> yeah. Should I discard and this? Go for it. Okay, so I want everybody to take a moment and think about, pretend like you you have an almond in your, in your hand. And this is a practice we do at Odyssey. What does it take for the almond to become an almond? Walk in the life of our, our food that we get every day and that we're eating in order to plant it, in order to take care of the plant as it grows. Then then the person goes out and picks the plant from it and then the, they package the plant or the, the food and then they take it all the way to the grocery store. And then you, the human, have worked really hard to get that money. You drive to the grocery store, you get mm -hmm. it, you take it home, all of that just to get to your mouth. 
-hmm. is a lot. So being really mindful Mm -hmm. of that approach when it comes to food, what it takes in water and transportation Mm -hmm. in order to have it. And and, and less is more. I mean, it's better for you physically too. And I'm going to say like the yin to that yang is that entire process requires so much energy Mm -hmm. that we also need to be mindful of all of that transportation and growth Mm -hmm. and sources of water and Mm -hmm. money and time and Mm -hmm. people that it takes to get that almond to your plate that's all energy Mm -hmm. that's all a whole ton of co2 that gets emitted into the atmosphere Mm -hmm. and so if we're able to just cut out the middleman and go to a place like a farmer's market Mm -hmm. then we're directly supporting um something that is not causing as many emissions. Yeah, because there's no transportation from it. It just came from our backyard. Yeah, so farmers and market, it's great. And a lot of people are, I mean, there's a huge movement where people are growing their own food as Mm. well. So if that's something you love to do. Fun fact, do you guys know what America's largest crop is? If somebody knows the answer to this, other than Lindsay, cheating, pop it in the comments and you're going to get like bonus points in winning a ticket because it's super cool. And if you guys hop on, whether late or early, and you have questions about, hey, how can I make a difference, or what do you guys think of that, pop it in the Q&A. Even if we don't get to it now, we get to it later and answer. Drum roll answer is grass. Grass is the number one for America. All of us, I mean, like a majority of Americans got a yard. Even some of you in an apartment got a small area and there's community gardens. If, if we, the America culture, started growing a little bit of food in our gardens, like... The staggering number of people we could feed around the world is huge. So take advantage of community gardens or your own garden. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, it's typically toxic free depending on your Mm -hmm. soil. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what are some other tips that people can do right now? We have number one, light bulb switches. Mm -hmm. This is a great one. I'm just going to plug number two, switch from plastic water bottles. Even though he didn't say that, he didn't say that. Okay, reusable. Better for you, better for mine. Okay, go ahead. What was number three? I think you should expand on that. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> um planes travel you can offset your travel with planting uh-huh. trees we gave some really great um places to do it reduce by 50 percent, and when you get there reduce by another 50 percent, and just try to keep going until you try to meet your basic needs mm. with as little as possible food consumption stop mm. throwing food out stop mm-hmm. overcooking stop over buying please 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 don't be what is this weird thing when people go to restaurants and they don't take their leftovers home what yeah silly and i, I think Like we focused a lot on food when we were doing the uh, fundraising dinner in New York Mm -hmm. because um, not only is food waste management and eating a more plant-based rich diet, the two out of the top uh, 10 solutions uh, to reducing global warming, uh, but they're also so good for you. Mm -hmm. Um, I can't stress enough, even though we've said it just previously, how just cutting out some red meat from your diet is mm-hmm. gonna help make such an incredible impact mm-hmm. and make you so much healthier. And if mm-hmm. you need some uh, some motive, mm-hmm. uh, I would recommend, irrespective of the controversy that follows it, watching mm-hmm. the documentary um, Game Changers. And it mm-hmm. talks all about how converting to a vegetarian and, mm-hmm. and vegan diet is so much better for you mm-hmm. and all the benefits that arise from it, because mm-hmm. I definitely don't have those facts in my brain. Mm-hmm. Um, but even if it's just um, something like meatless Mondays is a mm-hmm. trend that's going around, or uh, or a few meals a day, like or a few meals, yeah, just one cutting, meal a day if you can just slow down, uh huh, cutting it out of it because mm-hmm. we only need, I think, the average American only needs thirty to fifty grams of protein a day, and that can be come from met plants by plants. Yeah, it can come from also you don't know, broccoli, like it's like a couple cups of broccoli yeah. equals a steak. Yeah. Food Revolution is another one you guys can check out. Um, There's a ton of sources that show you, like the guy who did all the studies in the blue zones, which is where people live the longest. Mm -hmm. If there was meat around, it was very little and it was really free range. Mm -hmm. Meat, no matter what anybody tells you, is full of hormones and antibiotics, all sorts of other things. Not, we're meant to be herbivores, not carnivores. If you study the history of man. Um, and you're gonna save on money. I would just, like, you guys, if you're just wanting to get green just to get some green, you're gonna save money by eating less meat, putting more vegetarian diets. Even Daniel here, lifts, goes to the gym all the time. Thanks to Adrian. Yes, Gabriel Adrian. Illuminante, yeah. whatever your name is on Facebook. <laughs> yeah. He set me up yeah. with uh, a meal plan yeah. and a workout schedule. That's no meat. That's no meat. Vegetarian. And basically vegan, because, well, minus honey, but doesn't do cheese. And so you it's can eggs. do it. It exists. Yeah. Okay. So eat less meat, eat less. Uh, we got light bulbs. 
The refrigerators are also a really big thing that cause pollution. And I didn't know this. It's huge, refrigerators. Yeah. Yeah. So shut your refrigerators. Get better working refrigerators. Be mindful how long you're standing in the refrigerator. What are, uh, like, what, what are some things with that? I think that um, refrigeration management is a big solution. Mm. And that's it's tough for households. We focus a lot more on, I think, that solution as a, as a commercial solution mm. because of um, mm. the chemicals used, especially when they leak out in the disposal process. I think it's called a, it's some acronym for hydrofluoronic chlorides. Mm. Uh, to our environment. I, I, mm. I can't remember exactly, but one of, I think it's like an HFC um, that was actually tearing holes in the ozone and the entire world came together and said, okay, we need to ban these immediately so that we can repair our ozone layer. Mm. Uh, but now, unfortunately, there's another one that's an even more complex acronym that I can't remember that is 1,000 to 9,000 times greater than mm. carbon dioxide mm. uh, that's polluting our environment. And so uh, focus, and there's, a, there's an, an accord that just got passed, which is gonna start phasing out those chemicals uh in right. uh high income countries which has already started in america and then you know in the next uh decade they're gonna start waning them out of refrigeration uh units right. between commercial and households in the next following years i think it's really key to know on what he just said so it was passed if you guys aren't voting please go yeah. vote for me I don't care what side you're on politically, but you can start passing and being a part of the conversation mm -hmm. when it comes to things that are allowed in our systems. And again, if this doesn't affect you because you don't care about greener America or whatever, or the environment of the earth, but you do care about the toxins in your body, um, th there's an estimated 15,000 different ingredients they've banned in Europe from products that we use. And when America, it's like 15. Mm -hmm. because we're allowing just a slew of things that are toxic for us, toxic for the environment. Ma that Monsanto just passed a pesticide that has been banned for 10 years that they're allowing to come in now. And it's really scary. Child leukemia is linked to pesticides. So one of my favorite quotes is, if you're not um, at the dinner table, then you're on the menu. So think about that. If you're not a part of this discussion, if you're not out there signing bills and being a part of legislation and making votes and being joining a nonprofit who cares about the environment or things in your area, then you're on the menu. Your children are on the menu. Your future's on the menu. And they're choosing for us. Mm -hmm. And corporations are ruling over what's better for us. It is definitely profit over what we need as a society. And you can see what happens from that. And voting at your local area is probably the single most important thing you can do, which is now the time. So if you're not registered to vote, go register to vote, start voting now. And if you only want to do it for Greener America, I love you, I'll happily accept that. So start yeah. start getting to that table. Make America green again. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. It's true. Um, I, I do believe that there's so much power in it. Um, and again, you know, reforesting and reviving. When we think about mm. the theme of this entire conversation, Sarah described it as how do we not focus so much on the problem, but focus on creating a greener planet and what's the greenest thing on the planet. Mm. It, it's nature mm -hmm. and, and trees. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, if, if history uh, tends to repeat itself and it's been documented already. Places in the Middle East were once you know, thriving ecosystems and populations and they became too populated. And um, unfortunately now they've turned into deserts. Mm -hmm. And um, I hope that's not the fate and future of Our America planet. or the planet. rest of the entire planet. planet. But that is what's happening when there is too much carbon dioxide and too many greenhouse gases. Mm -hmm. um, it and, and the earth heats up, it drastically affects what happens to the precipitation patterns. And if you think about it like uh, a boiling pot of water, the higher you're turning up the heat, the higher you're turning up the heat of the planet, uh, the quicker that water is dissipating and evaporating. 
and when that happens, uh, the earth gets pretty confused and it starts creating extremely heavy downpours around the world, which we're seeing. Mm. Confusing abnormal weather patterns mm. and when there's heavy downfall or downpours of water, um, it's just eroding the land. It's not giving enough time for the soil to sort of drink in all of that water and then uh, it's just kind of destroying the land. Mm. And so that's something we want to avoid is mm. how do we get to the source of all that? How do we get to somebody or some company or some mm. organization mm. or some government that's going to say, wait a second, like, mm. how do we stop all this from happening? How mm. do we, you know, protect this, mm -hmm. uh, our land and the environments and the national forests mm. that are going to replenish themselves? And it's up to us. Absolutely. We keep sitting around like, when is legislation, when is the government like gonna, is, it, is anybody gonna save us? Where mm -hmm. is this gonna happen? No, it's up to us. It's up to each and every single one of us. And you, mail, you make a vote every day when you buy something. Mm -hmm. So remember that, support corporations that are greener. There's B Corp cor corporations that operate at a certain level. There's green corporations. You know, buy, stay away from one-time use plastic. I use reusable soap nuts. Um, those are saving the planet so, so much. I make my own house cleaner with vinegar and soap mm -hmm. and water and essential mm -hmm. oils. So stop getting those plastics every time and start doing your own. Mm -hmm. There's a ton you can do to save money and make a, a, a difference. Yeah. Um, I think um, Sarah keeps trying to remind everybody, mm -hmm. like, how, how do we benefit from it mm -hmm. um, besides having a healthier planet? Um, speaking just about uh, washing and drying, yeah, soap mm -hmm. nuts are pretty cool. Uh, but I'm not sure if a lot of people know that when you're using a dryer, you're using five times as much energy mm. as a single load of washing. Wow. And even though it's inconvenient uh, sometimes, uh, for you to be able to save massively on your energy bill, you could just hang dry some of your clothes outside if you're mm. capable and able to. Um, Sarah does about 10 loads of washing a week or so, so it's pretty, it'd, be, it'd be pretty What's tough. That? What? To, to hang dry what? all those little what? baby clothes and towels. Girl, this girl sometimes goes days without shower. That's the truth be told. And I will wear the same shirt. Look, this is my pajama shirt. I'm just going to be honest with y'all. I went from my PJs to my PJs for this video. Um, I have kids though. So yes, tons yeah, of tough. laundry from children. Well, I think what we want to do is throw out as many potential solutions as possible and tips yeah. and tricks. And like, if it works yeah. for you, that's great. Because yeah. one, my sister asked. Consumption. And another thing that's happening is even just like the plastic China stopped taking our garbage. So let's get really mindful, clever, buy used. Um, is there anything you want to end with? Can we give everybody one challenge that they can start doing now? Hmm. Um, perhaps a mental exercise that you might be able to practice continuously. Mm -hmm. And that is, like, imagine you're in your bed and you put your comforter over your head and imagine it's cold outside and you're using this blanket in bed obviously to keep you warm. Imagine you are the planet. Mm. You're the source of warmth. Mm. And your blanket is our atmosphere mm. and it's containing all of that heat. But eventually you kind of have to lift the sheet and after all of us have experienced this you eventually have to lift um, that veil off of your head so you can breathe a little bit because it gets pretty stuffy and it gets pretty hot and warm and if you can imagine you know your internal temperature just rising and rising and rising like a mm -hmm. fever then you're going to want that blanket off of you as quickly as possible and that blanket um, mm -hmm. tends to get even more stuffy when there's a whole bunch of carbon dioxide so the metaphor would be like just try to get in touch with yourself and imagine that you are part of this earth that you're one with this mm -hmm. earth and that you don't want to uh, do anything to harm it because this earth is like a body and it's our home and it's containing mm -hmm. us all and so we don't want to give ourselves a fever do we mm -hmm. i love that yeah and go register to vote and go register okay, that's, that's, that's actually that's, what he that's, said that's, that was actually his challenge that's that's, that was that, yeah yeah, yeah. The blanket metaphor yeah. was a metaretaphor to vote exactly Get what Sarah said. Off that menu. Get to the table and start making decisions as a collective that's going to give us a greener environment. Mm -hmm.
It's really important. I, we are so, so freaking thankful for everyone who stuck with us this whole time as we blabbered on and on about statistics and things you can do. And I interrupted Daniel a million times as he's so patient with me. Yeah. Uh, I, they need one word. So somebody watching who watches all seven days of our transformation challenge, we need one word that they get to enter in yeah. to win a ticket. Well, I, I think we already know since my metaphor was about voting, mm. then I guess the word, the word is vote. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> wow, you just tickled my heart there. We were just talking about how important this is. I, I love you. You're amazing. Thank you. And I'm really glad to be on this planet with you and doing this work together and serving. Likewise. I hope each of and every one of you that made it throughout this um, took something away today on how you can you can make a difference for a greener. Um, planet and how it does really circle back to you. There's yeah. there's just no free ride. It's coming, even if it's over here happening, it's gonna find its way to yeah. affect us. So. I'd say the number one okay. greatest takeaway, if you didn't take away anything at all, uh, would be to focus on just food waste management. How much mm -hmm. do you absolutely have to buy when you're at the grocery store? Try not to overestimate how much you're gonna eat or consume or buy in a week and then try not to let your refrigerator become a graveyard mm. or an old museum for old food. Yeah, don't waste it. Yeah. Use it. Because it's a pity every time. I mean, and we're, I'm no pro and I'm sure Sarah's no pro either. Mm. Some things just kind of slip out of our minds and eyes and then it just kind of fades into the background corner of the refrigerator and it's like, oh, not again. <laughs> Why do I have to throw this away? And it's your money. And it's your money. Your money. Um, so save money, try to save. Food. Uh, food and energy and as much as possible and thank try to you, read Paul. this book we should say the big thank you to Paul for yeah. doing this work he has another one coming out soon that um, is supposed to be even better right that's what I hear yeah so project drawdown if you are interested in it just visit drawdown.org they have basically uh, created a really cool synopsis of uh, the 100 solutions you can click on them and it'll give you a brief overview mm -hmm. of why it's important how many gigatons of carbon emissions are reduced by 2050 oh, how much you need to invest wow. into it and how much yeah. it saves i mean the numbers are in the trillions of dollars mm -hmm. that some of the solutions end up saving in the next mm -hmm. 30 years mm -hmm. and it's really really fascinating it's all figure outable if it feels heavy and it feels dark and it feels like, what do I do? Like there's a solution for everything we're doing right now. Every single thing you can think of, there's a solution to offset it. It's all yeah. figure outable. So it exists there. What? Are we frozen? No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's because when somebody called my phone, it's just a thing. Anyway, we love you guys. Thank you so much for yeah, listening. Yeah. Tomorrow is our last day of the transformational challenge. And, um, we're the, interview is just going to be really great and um i'm really excited for arbia i think i'm saying his name correctly Aubria um is this huge healer who uses sound medicine and has a project called dream it real and it's super cool to help empower you for your life mm -hmm. hope to see you guys in odyssey and maui for the five-day training if you have any questions about it Call us, ping us, message us. We're gonna help you get there. We're gonna help you manifest a ticket, manifest a stay. Five days to change your life, change the planet. Who wouldn't wanna go? I'm sure gonna be there. <laughs> Bye guys, thank Bye. you. Mwah.